Hello, amazing people. Welcome to another episode of the Color series that I'm currently running. If you've not heard of this series before, I strongly advise you go back to previous series. In the last episode, we talked on camera calibration. But in this episode, we are talking about something amazing that I strongly believe can take your color grading to the next level. Every photographer wants to master color grading. That's for sure. And there are different types of tools that you can use to master this um, skill. But the color grading panel in Lightroom is one of the best because it gives you the liberty to be able to control your highlights, to control your mid tones, and to also control your shadows when it comes to color. It was formerly called split toning. So if you are not using one of the latest models of Lightroom, you might not have access to this panel. But if you do, it's amazing. And if you don't, I advise you strongly upgrade your Lightroom to something more recent so you can have this panel. So it was formerly split toning. So some of you might be familiar with split toning, but the major reason why Adobe chose to change it back to the color reading panel is because on the split toning, you can't, you can't control your mid tones. You can only deal with your shadows and your highlights, so which kind of limits you. But on the color grading panel, you can deal with your highlights, your mid tones and your shadow. One thing I also want you to know is that the core of every photograph you take is centered around those three things. I like mid tones and shadows. If you don't understand how to deal with these three things, you can't get the best color possible out of your images. And there's no way you can beat your chest and call yourself a professional editor if you don't master color grading. Lightroom is one of the best tools you can use for color grading. And if you master this color grading panel, it will really, really help you. The beauty of the color grading panel is even without using a preset, from scratch, you can use the color grading panel to bring out the type of color you want out of your photograph. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Let's get into it. So as to give you a deeper understanding as to how to master the color grading panel, I decided to give you this black to white gradient right here. You know, on this black to white gradient, you're going to have a clear understanding of how the panel works and how to use it for your image. So after we do this, we will now try it on one or two photographs. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you go to your develop panel, um, right under, we have the basic, the tone curve, the color mixer, and the color grading. The color mixer was formerly called HSL, which is also the same here. Then the color grading, like I said earlier, was formerly called split toning. So yeah, it is the color grading panel. So this is just a raw image. It's a black to white gradient. And I just want to give you an understanding of how these things work. So we have three major channels when it comes to the color grading panel, like I mentioned, the mid-tones, the shadows, and the highlights. So you can open the three components all at once, like it is right now, or you can come up here, click on this dark area, which is the shadows. The middle one is the mid-tones. The third one is the highlights. So let us just take it one by one so we have an understanding. So let's start with the first one here, which is the shadows. You know, and we have three major things here that we have to look at which is the saturation, the hue, and the luminance, you know? Some of you should know this already, but let me quickly show you, explain what I mean. The saturation is the intensity of the color, the hue is the type of the color, while the luminance is the brightness or darkness of the color. So now we are dealing with only our shadows. So what the color grading panel does for you is that it gives you the power to color grade only the shadow parts of the pictures, and it will not even affect the other areas only the dark areas of the images will be affected. So let's take, for example, you want the dark areas of the images to look bluish or to have a tone of purple. You can just add purple to that and it only affects the shadows of the image. And your highlight is intact, your mid-tones in, is intact. That's, it gives you power, it gives you control. And that's what every editor should have. So let's give it a try on this gradient. Now, focus on the dark area of the images. Remember that we're dealing with the shadows. Don't look at the black areas. You know, if you look at this gradient right now, this lower part over here is completely black. You can't really add color to black. <laughs> so just look at this area here where there's a lot of dark gray. This dark gray is the shadow area, you know, is the shadow area. So now let's take, for example, I want to add some colors to that shadow area. You can see this circle slider right here in the middle of this color wheel. All I have to do is to click on it and drag it to the direction of any color of my choice. So the further I drag this color towards the color, that's me increasing the saturation of that color. And if I pull the circle back to the middle of the wheel, that is me reducing the saturation of that color. Let me repeat myself. The further I drag the circle towards a color, that is me, let me just do that again. That is me increasing the saturation of that color. 
And when I pull the circle back to the center of the wheel, that is me reducing the saturation of the color. So here's an example. Let's say on the shadow area, like I mentioned, we want to add some greens to the shadow. All I have to do is to click on this circle and pull it towards the green. This is me pulling it towards the green. You can see what's happening to the gradient. You would notice that the white part, which we are going to call the highlight area, is intact. Nothing is happening to it. Then, after the white part, you can see the white part here. Nothing is happening to it. It's not affected. After the white part, you come down to a little bit of mid-tones right here. This is where the mid-tones is. You see that nothing much is also happening. It's also intact. But if you come here, which is the darker area, the shadow part, you can see a lot of green on it. That's the beauty of color grading. Now, let's try another color. Like I said, if I pull it back to the center, I'm reducing the saturation of that color. And if I take it up like this, I'm increasing the saturation. You can see that the further I go towards the end, the thicker the color becomes on the image. I can try to pull it away, maybe towards yellow, towards red, towards purple. If I feel the purple is too much, all I have to do is to take this circle and pull it down to back towards the center. It will reduce it and increase it depending on what I want. Let me just leave this at, um, let's say, purple like this. So it will show us a difference. And that's how it works. That's to saturate the color, you know? And if you want to increase the luminance, like maybe you want the color to be brighter on that area or, or darker, you can just come down here to where luminance is and increase it. You can see how it brightens it up. And if I take it down, it darkens it up. And you see that it doesn't, it doesn't really affect the highlight and needles, like I said. For, for you to understand, this place that I'm overing my mouse over is the highlight. Why this other place here is the needles, then over here is the shadows. So if I take down my luminance, you can see, you see that? If I take it up, you see what's happening? So that's the beauty of it. So let me leave this luminance back in the middle. Let's head to mid-tones. Now for mid-tones, let's say we want to add some um, blue, for example, to the mid-tones. All I have to do is to click on the circle, pull it towards blue. I pull it towards blue. Can you see what's happening to the mid-tones? You will notice that the purple that we added to the shadows is still super intact. Like it's, it didn't change. It didn't change the blue. Remember, if you, if, when we're talking of camera calibration, which was the one we touched on, in the previous episode of this color series, you will see that that one, it was affecting the old image. But in the case of color grading, it can focus only on the different color tones, which is the shadows, the mid-tones, and the highlights. So now, I'm pulling it towards blue. You can see that it doesn't affect the shadows. And if I pull it away back to the middle, it reduces the intensity of the color. And if I pull it up towards that color, it also increases the intensity of the color. If I want it to be brighter, all I have to do is come to my luminance, increase the brightness, it makes it brighter. And if I take it down, it makes it darker. That's, that's how it works. Let's try it on the highlight here. Over here, I click on my highlight. For the highlight, let's try a different color. Let's say we want to give it some greens. So let me click on the circle and pull it towards my highlight. So you can see the way we just colored these gradients without me having to use my saturation or my basic panel or my tone curve panel. Just on the color grading panel, I will, I'm able to color a completely black and white image. You know, that's the power of the pa this panel. And you can see that I'm able to separate my highlight, my shadows, and my mid-tones. Everything has separate colors just because of what I have done. I hope you guys are getting what I'm trying to say. And one other thing that you can also do is to do a, a global color toning. For example, you don't really want to stick to only highlight, mid-tones, or shadows. You want something that will cover the whole image. If you check the fourth option right here, it's global. You click on it, you can see that it's written right here, global. So let's say for this, I want to add some reds. If I pull it towards the red, it affects all the image together. It mix with the existing colors. You know, if I add some blues, it mix with the existing color. You can see what's happening to the image. If I add some warmth, which is yellow, you see what's happening to the image. This is global, so it affects everything right from the highlights all the way down to the shadows. You know, that's the beauty of it. Now, one other thing that you can do, let me go back to the major adjust here, is to blend it. You know, is to blend it. And what blending does for you is to blend the transition between each color tone. You know, if you want the transition between each color tone to be smoother, you take up your blending. And if you want it to be sharper, you reduce your blending. Let me show you what I'm trying to say. This is the blending slider over here. And um, I'll take it to my right and you see what happens to the gradient. Just keep your eyes on the gradient. If I pull it up this way, you can see that it's blended more. Look at the highlights here. And the mid-tones, the transition is very smooth. But see what happens if I take it all the way down. See what happens, the transition is not as smooth. Let me show you when it was smooth and when it's not smooth. You can you see, 
the separation is more instantaneous. So that, that's the beauty of blending. So when you are doing your color break, you've added your, some colors to your shadows, you've added some colors to your mid-tones, and you feel like they are too distinct. You can just come to your blending and just take it off to make it softer. And if you want them to be more intense, you can take down your blending. Then also we have the balance slider. Also a slider that comes in very, very, very handy. You know, if I put the balance slider to my right, you see what happens? <laughs> it completely intensifies the color. And if I reduce the balance, it completely makes it softer. It, let, me, let me just explain what balance slider does. It magnifies your mid-tones. As simple as that. It helps your mid-tones. Let me pull it to the left so I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm trying to say. It makes your mid-tones softer or, you know, you see what I'm trying to say here. So that's the beauty of the balance slider. I'm, I'm sure you would have a better understanding when we try this on an actual photo. But I believe using this black to white gradient has helped you to you know, have a picture of how the color grading panel works. And as we proceed with this video, please don't forget to like this video and to also subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right, so let's try this on an actual image. All right, so let us just use this image to practicalize what we just studied now. You know, it's very straightforward. It's just like what we did before. But let's just apply it on an actual image. So this is a completely raw photo. All I did on this photograph is just to increase the brightness because it was shot a bit dark, as you can see. So it's just to increase the brightness and we're good. Look at it the before and after. So it's just brightness I increased. I didn't do anything that is color grading related. All right. So now looking at this photograph, let's apply what we did before. So I'm going to come to my shadow slider. You know, I want the shadow to look a little bit um, dim, a little bit cold or cool for a better word. And if I'm going to do that, I'm going to go towards blue. So let me click on this, my circle slider and pull it towards blue. And pull it more towards blue. You know, you can even see something's already happening to the image. And you see that it's already looking very um, bluish, you know, because the shadow area, which are the dark areas of the pictures, are, are tending to the blue top, you know. So if I feel I want the blue to be intense, all I have to do is to pull it more towards that blue to increase the intensity. But I don't think I want to go this far. So I just leave it somewhere around here, you know. And I don't think I want to increase the brightness of that blue. You see what happens? And I don't think I want to darken it either. But in some cases, you might want to, but in this case, I don't want to. So let's go to our mid-tones. Let's go to our mid-tones. For the mid-tones, I like to warm it a bit. Since we added some cool tone into the shadows, I want to warm it with mid-tones. So I want to take it towards the yellow slash red, somewhere around that. So I'll click on the circle and pull it towards that direction, just to give it some warmth. To give it some warmth. So you see what's happened? Let me turn the panel off. Bam, back on. Can you see? Can you see the difference? This is before. And this is after. This is before, and this is after. So something is already happening. You know, this is the this is the definition of color grading. I'm sure a lot of times when we hear color grading, we think it's something magical, something so difficult. But it's really not difficult. It's just about what your eyes can see and what you would like to get out of your photograph. So let's color grade the highlight area of the image. Let's just play. Let's just add some greens to the highlights. Let's add some greens to the highlights. Okay. So I'm not going to overdo this. So it doesn't look weird. Aha, so this is before and this is after. Can you see that we've literally done color grading? This is before and this is after. You know, and like I said earlier, you can also do the global color grade, like clicking on this and it affects everything. Let's just say you want everything to look very blue, bluish and cool. All I have to do is to click on it and pull it towards the blue and it affects all of the image. Can you see that? If I want to make it very red, warm and intense, I can pull it more towards this direction. To give it a little bit and i don't I, I don't really want to overdo these things it doesn't look weird and artificial so i'd rather just walk somewhere you know around here you know to get the results that i want out of my image then i can also choose to blend it if i want the blending between the highlight mid-tones and shadows to be smoother all i have to do is to come to my blending panel and pull it to the right you know you might not really see it to be honest especially if you're watching through the video but when you practice these things you'll see what i'm talking about you know, and if I reduce the blending, there's actually a significant difference. Look at with the blending and without the blending. Can you see what's happening with the blending and without the blending? So it actually shows. So that is how this works. So what I strongly advise that you do is to try this out. Practice it. You don't just watch a video and just master how something works. So open your Lightroom, get one or two of your photographs and practice what I'm just saying. This gives you more control. The goal of every artist the goal of every photographer is to master colors. You know, that's why I even started this color series in the first place. So it's important that you practice what you just learned. You know, and when you are doing this practice, don't forget that you are dealing with, you are dealing with three shades. 
which is the eye like windows and shadows. And as long as you focus on those three shades and you try to manipulate them the best way you can, I strongly believe that you can get fantastic images. You can create beautiful images. So I hope you've learned something from this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Check out other episodes of this color series and many other of our um, educational contents that we've created. See you in the next episode. Cheers.